Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one, I'm going to show you four quick and easy tips for analyzing your Facebook ads. So as a beginner, then it can be quite overwhelming coming into a new ad manager account, seeing all these different numbers, not knowing what they mean and not really having a clue what to do. So the idea of this video then is to show you the kind of things you need to be looking for, what numbers to focus on, and ultimately what kind of patterns that essentially you need to be looking for, um, for a couple of reasons really. Number one, it's gonna make sure that you don't switch off that ad set that potentially could go on to make you lots of money, but then on the flip side of that, to make sure you do switch off that ad set that's only gonna drain your money. Now, before we jump into point number one then, I just wanna quickly mention, as always, in every single video, I always give away a free one-to-one -one consultation call with me. If that's something that you think that might help you, that you want a chance to win, all you have to do is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on my previous video, just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And with that being said then, let's jump straight into it with point number one. So point number one then guys is spotting patterns. And just to kind of illustrate what I mean by this, we're gonna jump into an ad manager account of mine and I'm just gonna show you the kind of things you can be looking at um, to decipher then whether an ad set is gonna be perform or not. Um, going back to the original point I made in the intro to make sure that you don't switch off that ad set too early um, and to make sure you don't switch off that ad set too late so it drains your bank account. So what I've got here then is essentially every single ad set in this ad manager account. They're all purchase ad sets, which is another point I'm gonna to touch on later on in the video. So we're comparing ad sets that have got the same objective. They're all interest tags in ad sets as well. So that way we're making fair comparisons. And again, that's another point later in the video. But what I want to show you then to illustrate this point, we'll just refresh the table in fact, just to make sure we've got all the latest data. Um, so what we're looking at here then, we're looking at the amount spent and we're gonna be comparing this to the purchase ROAS, so the return on ad spend. And we're looking for a correlation between the two to give us an idea then of whether an ad set is then gonna go on and be successful or not. Because that's one of the number one questions I get asked is that when, how long should you run an ad set for? How much should you spend? How many days? So on and so on. So this is a custom column I've created myself. You can see it's called ROAS comparison. I've got the amount spent here and then on the far right, I've got the return on ad spend. And the reason I've structured like this is just so it's easy to compare the numbers. If it was one column over here versus one column over here, it just makes it a lot more difficult going back and forth. So again, we're gonna cover that later on in the video. So anyway, we're working from top to bottom. I've filtered it so the amount spent, the maximum is at the top with the lowest at the bottom. And we're just gonna work our way through um, and just try and see at what point the the kind of like, at what point a kind of pattern presents itself. So on average in this account, the ROAS was 1.77. So that's kind of be kind of like our base standard. So starting from the top then, we can see we're there or thereabouts. Um, 1.56, 2.06, 1.7, 1.77, the exact same. Um, again, it's pretty much there and thereabouts, which is pretty consistent with how I've seen things perform in the past with all of my different ad manager accounts. Um, and we're just looking at to see basically where it starts to drop off and if there's a correlation between the ad spend and the purchase ROAS. So going further down, we've got a couple of kind of like really low ones here, but then it jumps straight back up um, to be fairly consistent. But then again, it drops down again. So this is where kind of like the inconsistencies are starting to come in. Um, and this is kind of like at 1600 pounds and above, it's fairly consistent, but then once there's a big drop in the spend. So you can see there, 653 pounds. Um, you've got a pretty good ROAS and again for that, but then again, spending the exact same amount, almost, it's almost 50% of that ROAS. So you can see this is where the inconsistencies are starting to come in, which is something that we can learn from. Carrying on then, we can see that then again, it jumps back up, which is again, more and more inconsistencies. And then as we get a bit further down, we can see that down here where we've spent 120 pounds, this is actually the first time in which it drops below a 1.0 ROAS. And if we just carry on down to see if that stays consistent, again, we've got a really low ROAS there. Um, and then we've got 100 pounds spend, 1.13, and then it jumps back up, then it jumps back down, then it jumps back up, then it jumps back down. So what this is telling me then is that until I've spent approximately at what point is it come more consistent? As, until I've spent approximately over, say, 400 pounds, then the results are always gonna be inconsistent. Now, the profitable ROAS for this store was about 1.4, so if we just include that in when we're 
looking for the pattern to spot, if that makes sense, then we're looking at what point it's consistently above that. And we and it's approximately at this mark here. Anything kind of under 120 pounds we can see, then we kind of get lucky spending 70 pounds, but that, that could just pure that could be pure luck. Um, but on average, below 120 pound spend is below a 1.0 ROAS and therefore it's unprofitable. So what that tells me then is that I have to spend approximately 120 pound on an ad set before Facebook starts to optimize, learn who my customers are, and therefore give me the results that actually make an ad set profitable. And in there guys then lies the key and the success to Facebook ads in that if you don't give your ad set enough of a chance to optimize, get a push enough data through, then you'll never give an ad set a chance to make you money essentially. Now, obviously this is gonna vary from audience to audience as some audiences are more competitive than others. But for this specific audience then, as we've just as we've just highlighted, that seems to be the sweet spot in that I have to spend approximately 120 pounds and above on an ad set for it to actually start to optimize and bring in decent results for me. And if you're watching this video then, I want you to consider this against what your past experiences are and think about it. Go into your ad manager account now, pause the video, go into your ad manager account, look at the ad sets you've been running, um, look at the ones that are switched on, look at the ones that are switched off, and all the ones that haven't performed then, look at how much you've spent on them before you've started to switch them off because it could be a case in which like literally 50% of them, if not more, could be really good audiences. It's just a case that you haven't let them run enough, you haven't spent enough for Facebook to be able to optimize efficiently and actually start bringing you the sales and the ROAS that you want to see. So that's point number one then guys, I spent quite a lot of time actually um, trying to explain this, that's because it's a really important point. So if there's anything at all in there that I haven't covered that, didn't, that doesn't quite make sense to you, please, please, please make sure you leave a comment down below. Um, I always get back to every single person. So moving on to number two then, this is the structure and organization of your Facebook ad account. And this is more important than you can ever imagine because as point number one, point number one is kind of like the key point, but in order to do that correctly, then you must do these following three points as well. So number so number two then, structure and organization. This will help you with spotting, par spotting patterns, but those patterns have to be fair comparisons. So you can't go and compete a lookalike audience against an interest targeted audience, or you can't go and compete an interest targeting audience against a retargeting ad because it's not a fair comparison. So when it comes to spotting patterns, then the patterns won't be fair patterns if that makes sense because the numbers will always perform different. So when you go out there and name your campaigns, name your ad sets, then this is the structure I want you guys to follow so that when you do filter the ad sets and when you are looking at the names of the ad sets versus the numbers, then you're making fair comparisons because if you don't spot a pattern within a fair comparison, then the numbers are gonna be skewed and it's gonna give you a false representation of whether you need to switch that ad set off or keep it running. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but like I said, any questions at all, just make sure you leave a comment below. So this is how I want you to name your ad sets then. First of all, I want you to call it by the name of traffic because you have different levels. You can have cold traffic, which is essentially when the audience you're targeting, it's their first encounter versus hot traffic, which is a retargeting ad, somebody who's seen your product um, before, um, if they've seen you for the second, third, fourth time, then obviously they're gonna convert at a different rate to somebody who's seen it the first time. So you can't make those comparisons against each other. So this is why you need to call it what kind of traffic is it then? Is it cold traffic? Is it warm traffic? Is it hot traffic? Then I want you to call it by the actual product itself. If you're advertising in loads of different products at a time, then you've got, again, you've got to make sure that you're comparing the same product against the same product in two different audiences. Then I want you to name it by the actual objective because again, you can't compare a traffic campaign against a purchase campaign. The numbers are just gonna be, they're not gonna correlate whatsoever. So it's gonna give you a false reading. And then finally, what the actual audience is. So is it a lookalike? Is it interest targeting? Is it a retargeting ad? Is it everybody who's been to your site but didn't make a purchase? Is it everybody who's made a purchase? And so on, just so that when you are spotting the patterns, then you are comparing like for like ad sets. Moving on to point number three then guys, which is breakdowns. So if you want to scale a particular ad set, 
um, or make it more profitable by spending more money on the brackets that are profitable, then this is essentially where the breakdowns tab comes into play. Many, many, many of you probably have already used it and seen it, but there's still some beginners out there. I feel like there's a lot of beginners that watch this channel that won't have seen it before. And it's if you've never seen it before, then this is gonna be a complete game changer for you. So I just wanna draw your attention over to the right where you can see the breakdown tab. Um, I'll just minimize this. So this is how it will open up for you. In fact, I'll clear all the breakdowns. So this is four select ad sets that have spent the majority of the money um, for me. And what I'm gonna do then is pretty much just find out where that money is coming from so I can then narrow it further down and just spend all of that ad spend, all of that budget, sorry, on the most profitable brackets. So we wanna go by delivery and then most commonly is the gender, which is the first one. Now, this is not the greatest example, in fact, because the first three ad sets are female only. However, if we have a look at the bottom one, we can see we've got male and female. And if we just look at the two ROASes, you can see that male is performing at 1.56, but then female is completely trumping that at 2.62. Now, this is where the Facebook algorithm doesn't always work efficiently, because you would think that it would be based on the ROAS and whichever gender would be bringing you the best ROAS, that's the one it would put most of the money into. But as you can see in this case, well, that just isn't the case. So what I would do here then is actually think about either duplicating this into another campaign and targeting female only with the same interests, or I might experiment with just simply removing male from this ad set and let it carry on running. Another breakdown you can do then, I'm not gonna show you every single one because you guys can go out and have a play around. I'll just show you kind of like the main two, gender, and then of course the other one is age range because this is one where you'll soon start to spot different patterns, especially depending on what niche you're in. There's definitely gonna be certain age ranges that are gonna be forming better than others. So just looking at the top then, we can see that kind of like, if if you look at, if we see where the best ROAS is, uh, we've got 1.55, 1.38, 1.22, 1.6. .1 so we can see that's kind of like the older generation. Anything above 34 age range is performing at a better ROAS than 1.22. So if I shut off those other two, that's gonna increase the profitability of this ad set. Moving down to the second one then, it's pretty much a reverse, I think, if I'm just comparing the numbers correctly. Anything over 65 plus is 1.41, which is the, which is kind of like the row, lowest ROAS. But then we've got 35 to 44, which is obviously pretty good. So what I would do here then is simply just cap this ad set at 64 to make sure that I'm not targeting people over 65 plus. Because as you can see, for this particular audience, they're performing at the worst ROAS. So that's a simple little as it is, but it can, trust me, go out, experiment, have a look in, within your ad sets, see where the data is coming from because it can make a huge difference to your profitability. Moving on to the fourth and final point then guys is the numbers. So you need to make sure you're looking at the right numbers, otherwise, Again, you're gonna get a false representation. And if you're not only focusing on the correct numbers, then it's gonna be very overwhelming. You might be looking at one column thinking it's another one. So a way to do this then is just customize your columns to make sure you only include these five. And these are kind of like the main five. And I'm gonna take you through one by one then of why I actually include every single one. First of all though, I wanna show you how I go about creating these. So simply go across to columns, customize columns, and we'll X off all of these to start again. So the first one I want you guys to add is the amount spent. Now the reason you need to add this is purely because of what I showed you earlier on in the video is that the amount spent versus at what point your ads start to perform better is kind of like a key correlation and pattern that you need to be focusing on because that's gonna be the key indicator then of when you need to shut an ad off or when, or when you need to keep it running. So amount spent, we also want our CPM. We also want our click-through rate, make sure it's the link click-through rate as well. We also want our cost per link click. And then finally, the very last one was our purchase ROAS. Uh, where are we, purchase ROAS? And we'll X off that as we only need it once. So these are the main columns then I want you guys to have on your screen. And then these are the numbers I want you to look at for every single ad set when you're making those comparisons. So here we are then guys, back in kind of like um, the overview of this ad account, you can see every single ad set here is listed. Um, and I've renamed the column then stop slash keep. And this is gonna be then the column that I use when I'm deciphering whether to keep an ad set running or whether I'm gonna shut it off or not. So I always filter by ad spend first, so you can see the most at the top and least at the bottom. And then this is essentially where the work begins. It can be a bit kind of tiresome and a bit 
um, I don't know what the word is, um, still don't know what the word is, but just it's, it's something you're just gonna have to do if you wanna be successful with Facebook ads. If you think that you can just keep putting out random ads and hoping for the best, then unless you've got really deep pockets, I don't think you're gonna get to where you want to be. If you wanna spend your money conservatively and make sure that every pound or penny you spend goes um, is useful and used properly, then I truly believe this is gonna be the best way. So start scrolling through the numbers slowly and just literally trying to take in as much as possible um, and just see what kind of spatten, spatterns, what kind of patterns start to present themselves. So always keep in the back of your mind then you've got the largest amount spent at the top and we're just going to start going through the numbers and one by one until we find a pattern um, just to kind of illustrate then to you guys what kind of work I'm trying to do when I'm looking at my Facebook ads. So looking at the CPMs then, they all seem fairly consistent-ish. You can see, um, in fact, not really at all actually. You've got kind of like around the five pound mark and then they tend to jump up. We've got the click-through rate again, that kind of tends to go up and down, up and down. Um, CPC, in fact, that looks pretty consistent. So when you find one that's consistent, that's kind of like what you want to kind of like base your overview of and then when that starts to change start looking at all the other numbers and then find that correlation in and between so we can see it's kind of like around the 70p mark a bit above bang on pretty much bang on bit below so you can see it's pretty consistent and then here it's starting to actually drop down which is interesting so from that amount spend you can see we've had 1600 here when it drops down the actual cost per link click actually gets a lot cheaper which is interesting and this actually continues on as you can see we've got like a freak one here which is quite expensive um, again it's kind of similar to a top but you can see here it actually carries on dropping down um, and actually gets pretty cheap so what that tells me then is that in the initial stages of an ad set Facebook is essentially just trying to drive the cheapest traffic um, as possible but once you start to spend a bit more then it's telling me that I can actually I'm actually starting to compete with the other kind of like big spenders within an audience and that is when I'm actually tagged in the highest quality audience within the audience I've selected if that makes sense so kind of like a better way to explain it is that when I've got a small budget Facebook is showing my ad to a lower quality audience within the audience that I've selected. But once I've started spending a bit more, then Facebook starts to show my ad to a higher quality audience. And even though the link clicks are costing more, that's probably because um, there's a higher competition. Um, they're actually converting at a better rate. Um, and that's actually where the majority of my purchase um, and revenue is actually coming from, if that makes sense. So hopefully I've explained that well enough. Hopefully I've given you some ideas or at least kind of like some guidance towards analyzing your own Facebook ads. So from what I've just seen then, my understanding is that once I start to spend a bit more money, Facebook starts to show my ads to a higher quality audience. And I need kind of like more clarification or more confirmation and that is true. So one thing that I would then now go on to compare that against is the CPM. So the CPM is the cost per 1000 impressions and the higher a CPM then obviously the more competitive an audience is because there's more and more people competing for those impressions. Therefore it's gonna drive the price up. Facebook is a bidding platform. So if I compare the CPMs now as we go down the list, then if my theory is correct, then initially where the spend is higher because it's a higher quality audience the cpm should be a lot higher versus the lower spend ones where the audience and the quality is a lot lower therefore it's a cheaper cpm if that makes sense so we'll just scroll through then we've got 569 1570 so you can see on average it's it's pretty much above 10 pounds on average especially from this point upwards and then as we start to get below this point so again it's always around this kind of mark so that's kind of like a sweet spot for this niche then as we get below that, then you can see it's pretty fairly consistently um, a lot cheaper. So that kind of confirms my suspicions in that once you spend kind of around this sweet spot, then you start Facebook starts showing your ads to a high quality audience and therefore you start to get better results. So with that being said then guys, I think that pretty much wraps up the video. That's all four points covered. Um, make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Um, hopefully, 
you've, you guys have found some value in this video. If you have, all I ask is that you leave a like on the video. And if you want to be entered into the one-to-one -one draw, just make sure you leave a comment down below. So with that being said, then guys, thanks for win thanks for watching. Um, and let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. So here we are then, guys, on my previous video. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, please do go and make sure you check it out. It's had lots of good feedback, so thank you very much to everybody who did like the video and leave a comment. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to take the URL at the top, head over to our random comment picker, get the YouTube comments, um, and go ahead and click start and see who the winner of this free consultation is going to be on this video then. So the winner of the previous video is that person there. If that's you, congratulations. Please reach out to me on Instagram and we can get that call arranged. And guys, if you want to stop trying your luck and you feel like you're never going to win one of these things and you just want to get straight down to business and book a call right away, you can actually do so. Just make sure you check out the video links in the description below. And that being said then guys, thanks again for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.